Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for the invite to come along today and um, share our uh, newly published uh, guide for care homes and inspectors who will inspect them. So I can't think of a better platform to launch this. Um, so thank you, Nathan and Kat, for making this possible. Um, I'm not an expert in this by any manner of means. Um, my expertise lies elsewhere. Um, but as, as part of the Care Inspectorate's work, um, we're quite keen to uh, collaborate and work with experts out with the organisation on specific topics so that these can be brought to our inspectors so that it helps them inspect better, but also for providers to measure where they are on that, that kind of um, best practice um, journey. So I'm hoping not to go here, and I've made some notes on the train and I've just realised I can't read them. <laughs> so, <laughs> bear with me. Um, so as I said, um, my job is, is looking at improvement. I work with the improvement team and we're, we're looking at having a suite of indicators of good practice for care across um, the spectrum. So um, I know everybody understands that we've got a regulatory role within um, Scotland that we regulate the social care services but we've also got a specific improvement duty as well and that's outlined there in the Public Services Reform Act. So the team I work with are um, a very small team of qualified improvement advisors and we've just launched our second strategy. Um, strategy one was um, raising awareness of the model for improvement because there's a national push in Scotland to have some sort of systematic approach to making improvements in care. And the model of choice is the model for improvement from the Institute of Healthcare Improvement in America. So why that? It's simple to use. Anybody can use it and it's transferable across any type of care service um, within either health or social care. So I'm not going to bore you with the details of um, strategy two, but for the last two years of our lives, um, the team and myself have spent time with our own inspectors and outside our organisation with providers, health and social care partnerships, larger um, care providers um, such as Four Seasons, etc., to teach them and, and make sure that they understand the application of this model for improvement and how to, how to improve and make sure improvements are sustained. Um, what underpins all that is the health and social care standards because we can use these to um, look at specific areas of care and make sure that care is person-centred, um, that it meets the needs of the person at the time they need it. As an organisation, we also need to get a wee bit better about using our intelligence to uh, make our improvements. And one of my team who has a pharmacy background is currently working with 30 care services across Scotland to look at reducing medication errors and not to point the finger at, at, at the person who's administering the medication, but to look at the system behind it and make sure that it, it encourages people to do the right thing all the time. We share things like this on our hub. I don't know if you've, you've ever um, visited our, our, our hub, but there is information and good practice that covers from early years right through to um, adults, old, older people, and the, all of the services that we um, regulate. We also have built over the last couple of years our improvement alliances, which we'll, we'll, we will continue to do. We've worked particularly closely um, and organising these improvement workshops across Scotland with the Scottish Care Leads and also the Coalition of Care Practice, CCPS, Coalition of Care Providers Scotland, um, to make sure that um, we speak to care at home providers as well. I told you my notes weren't working. So as I said, um, we've, we've got our own week in a booklet, which is on the improvement part of our hub. And our team covers Scotland, so we're, we're um, available to work anywhere, anytime with anybody. And this is um, the model for improvement that we've been trying to promote with um, care services across Scotland. And I'm sure everybody in the room has seen this before. Um, it's quite widely used with other organisations such as the Patient Safety Programme, Healthcare Improvement Scotland, NESS, everybody is using this as a, as a means to, to improve. So, getting fancy now. <laughs> <laughs> 
these, uh, these, these are not, these are not my slides. <laughs> so anyway, um, we, uh, I, I joined the Care Commission in 2002 as a tissue viability advisor, and I have woven my way through the, through the organisation in a, a variety of posts. Um, so in the old days, in my old job, I used to go out and um, confirm what the inspector found. So they would come to me and say, I've been to a care home, they've got a lot of pressure ulcers, maybe you should come and have, have a wee look. I don't think they're, they're doing their care planning properly and they're not using a wound assessment. So I would go out and I would go, yeah, you're absolutely right, these, these three things. But because I was only looking at one area of care, I would focus on that and drill down. And before the provider knew it, they had two or three requirements and it was like, woof. And then we would just say, right, we'll, we'll be back in six months. So there was no kind of um, open communication about this is the best practice and where to find it. This is what you should be putting in place. This is what you should be doing, linking with your local um, experts, etc. None of that happened. But when we merged in um, 2011 into the care inspectorate, we started to look at the way we functioned and started some some changes and we also realised that the Act told us we had this, this improvement function as well. So since 2014, and we've, we've had some good feedback from providers that um, we're not going in there with the clipboards and looking at the nitty gritty. We're, we're trying to be a bit more proportionate in, in our approach, particularly with the better performing services because we need to focus um, our activity on, on the poorer, poorer performance. We've, we've moved from that compliance approach to one of improvement and collaboration. We now tell you where, where you're going wrong and how, how, how to fix that. And there's a much greater emphasis on outcomes for people. Um, we're, we're looking more at having conversations with people who experience care, staff who are working in the service, etc., than sitting in the office and reading policies and personal plans. So that, that has had a bigger impact um, for us. And also our inspection reports are shorter, clearer, and in plain language. More up-to-date stuff, we're now looking, in, and we keep calling them the new standards. Well, they're not so new now. So we're, we're, we're looking at the, the health and social care standards that underpin everything we do. We're having a more transparent um, approach and we're looking at using quality indicators in, in, in our inspections to help folks to be able to understand exactly what, what we're looking for. So it's a, a bit more of a level playing field. There's also a greater emphasis on the self-evaluation process. And we used to ask people to do self-assessments for us. We don't ask that anymore because we now understand that the, they were only doing it for us. And when we went away, they got put on a shelf and, 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 and not used. So we're looking at more a self-evaluation process and that being ongoing and that linking to an improvement plan. And we also have illustrations of our inspections or, or our expectations, sorry, so that we um, can share that with providers and, and everybody's clear on what's, what good practice looks like and what should be happening. So talked about the standards and I think everybody in Scotland will now be familiar with these um, and the uh, overarching principles and the five general standards with the statements underneath these. So this is our guiding principles if if you like, and it should be the same for any anyone who's providing care over Scotland. <coughs> With the new standards, or the standards, brought us having to review our inspection methodology. So this is our, our um, quality indicator framework that we now use. And it asks five key questions. And when you look at something like this, you can see how well that it fits into these five questions because Kat's talked about things today, and I can't read them because I'm, I'm too far away, about, about people's well-being, um, about leadership and management within um, a service. How good is our staff team? And we've just had a discussion on um, education, qualifications and, 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 and requirements. And as, as you know, the... Uh, workforce um, in social care have to be registered with the Scottish Social Services Council. So that brings with that a, a formal um, 
continuing professional development approach. They have what's called a PIRTL. Don't ask me what, what a PIRTL is. Um, but that's my equivalent of nurse revalidation, where every three years they, they have to re-register, etc. So they, they are um, an, a, a workforce with, with qualifications. And the expert, um, or sorry, the expectation for the care inspectorate would be if the um, clients in that particular care home have a particular illness or, or, or condition, that staff would be trained and competent to manage that. And that, that, that would be um, our, our expectation. There's also the bit about the environment um, and, and also how, how well is care planned. So within um, these, these five questions, we would look at specific bits of um, key question one and key question five for a better performance service. So if that service is getting a four, five or six on our grading scale, then we would look at, at only these areas. But for the services who are four or under, we would look at more. So we're spending more time um, and support and improvement. Our bottom question is, um, how is the overall or what is the overall capacity for improvement, etc.? So that's not now at this point in time being asked, but the inspector is making a judgment against that. But in the future, there will be formal discussions with the manager and provider around um, their, their capacity to improve. I told you they're not my slides. <laughs> so there's a lot of questions asked about how we actually grade a service. So that, that's, that's our grading, which goes from six excellent, so that's outstanding or sector leading, to unsatisfactory, which is one, and is, is the, the very poor, poor performance service and um, is, is looking at enf enforcement action and, and potential closure. Um, so when we look at these, these key questions, we would grade accordingly to what the inspector would find. And as I said before, the inspector will spend less time looking at policies and paperwork, but it's more about speaking to people, observing practice, and getting feedback from people who are experienced in care so that they can make an informed um, judgment and grade around that. When the, the, there's a bit of a, a sort of dispute about there's two, two threes there and, and, and a four, we would go to the grade three. And I think that's caused a bit of um, angst with providers, but they're now, they're now getting used to that way of working. And as I said, that's our grading scale. We also have what's called a scrutiny toolbox. So when um, we, our inspectors carry out an inspection on the, the left-hand column, this is what the inspector will do um, to get the evidence um, to make an informed decision about how well that particular service is, is, is performing. And on the right hand column is the good practice that we would signpost providers to, to make sure that they can measure themselves against that and be inspection ready. This is our quality indicator framework. And as, as you can see, um, this is set out in that, in that particular way that we're, we're showing what a very good um, provider will, will have in place and also what weak practice looks like. Um, and that's, that's measured against uh, best, best practice. So we're being quite clear and transparent. And we'll, we'll also tell the provider um, what resources they should be looking for and what can be done to, for the inspector to evidence against each, each indicator. So I said, we're trying to build up a suite of these. Um, one of the other pieces of work that's coming to an end is um, I'm working with the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists to um, put out one of these, which covers eating, drinking, and swallowing um, for people who have that, that particular difficulty. Our inspectors will now highlight requirements and areas for improvement. We've, we've stopped um, giving out requirements with very short time scales because with our improvement knowledge and understanding, we're now saying to in, in, inspectors, improvement takes time. It won't happen overnight. If you want that improvement to be sustained, don't give a, a requirement to update your policy, train, train your staff, and make sure care plans are up to date and 
I'll be back in six weeks. It, it, it won't work. It hasn't worked. We know that. So the care of people living with HIV came out of, of the guidance that I was fortunate to be part of um, a couple of years ago. And we thought this, this would be a, a good idea to have this in place so that it makes sure people are clear about what's expected. Um, it also supports our inspectors as well as providers, and it does cover all, all types of services, um, care home, care at home, housing support, etc. And uh, as I said before, providers will use it to benchmark themselves against. So linking it to what's what's important, the, the uh, national best practice, the health and care standards, and also other good practice guidance, information and resources. And Kat's very niftily um, went over all these um, parts in quite, quite a bit of detail, so I won't repeat that. Um, but just to say that it, it will be interesting to see the response that comes back from providers about how well they feel they're, they're performing, because this is a high level stuff. And obviously they would want to go and look at um, the guidance in more depth. Kind of covered that already. So just a bit about our self-evaluation. If a provider uses this and identifies that they're not very good at a particular area, our um, guidance, which was only launched probably three, four weeks ago now, gets them to think about three questions. How well are we doing? Are we doing all of this? If not, um, we, you know, we need to think about that. How do we know we're doing well and how can we evidence that? So when the inspector comes out, they need to have some sort of in, like information data and it might be a run chart, it might be stories from um, folks that live in that particular service, feedback from relatives, staff, etc. And on the basis of that, they need to make a decision about how, how are we going to improve and what's our next steps. And that would link into the, to their improvement plan. So what will we do with this resource? As, as an organisation, um, there'll be links on our website, um, and that's to signpost providers, their staff, people who are experienced in care, and their families, so that um, the general public you know, get access to it. It'll also be on our, our hub um, under uh, potentially uh, care homes for older people, um, or sorry, care homes which cover older people and adults. We're also looking at um, sharing it internally with um, inspection teams, but also with our complaints team who may get complaints about poor care or poor experiences. And also a registration team, because I'm conscious of the of the comments that came earlier about how how do we know that this this home can can meet this personal person's needs and that should all be done when when a like a care home is registered and and um, things like this taken into account we're also looking at development sessions for our inspectors uh, as well as signposting staff who work in care homes to the the learning materials that that cast going over we also should be, and I just thought about this last yesterday afternoon before I sent the um, presentation off, um, should also be speaking to our strategic inspectors. I don't work with that particular group of, of um, in, in inspectors. My work's more with the care service inspectors. But I think it's important that um, when they're doing their joint inspections with Healthcare Improvement Scotland, that it's on their ad agenda as well when they're talking to the health and social care partnerships and commissioning teams, etc., cetera, um, around how, how, how well folks are, are, are meeting this. Um, the other thing would be, um, I've lost the, the train of my thought here, um, raise awareness and give links to the resource as part of our improvement workshops. Yeah, yeah, that, well, that's my job. <laughs> um, as, as I said, we've been travelling Scotland doing these improvement workshops and as part of that, we've been um, raising awareness of what's topical at this particular point in time. So this, this will be on our, our agenda. So thank you very much for listening and thanks again for the invite to come along this afternoon.